And I want to let's we talk a couple of more minutes. At least eight or five next week for people to join, and then we can start the session. Uh, but before that, can you guys see the screen and hear me? Please confirm in the chat. Uh, not yet, actually, yesterday you raised your hand, right? So, what is the query you had? So, they are interested. Uh, yeah, good evening all. So uh, let's wait for a couple of more minutes for people to join. So yeah, can you guys hear me? Please confirm in the chat. Yeah, good evening, streamers. Yeah, hi, yeah, nice. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I hope uh, you guys did download the resource, which is like that uh, OES. Anyhow, I'll show you how to uh, install and do those things. But before that, we will see the booting procedure. Again, this is a, a theory part, but uh, a needed one because uh, you need to understand how the booting process works, right? In Linux, especially. So, yeah. And it is a five day demo session. So after five days, it will be only for the paid candidates. Okay. So till that, you guys can join the same WebEx, sorry, uh, same uh, Zoom link. And uh, 
And uh, okay, so I guess it's already time better than we start the session. So yeah, once again, welcome to the session. So Karthik here, and this is my uh, supports uh, mail ID. So support at the logicapstick.com. So if you have any query related to the course or any like your login issue, your payment issue, anything, you can reach out to them. So someone from the team will support you. Only during this particular time, like from Monday to Saturday, between 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. I used to. Okay. And um, so that's what like our first five sessions will be for free. And from the sixth session, it will be only for the paid candidates. A new link will be sent only for them. And there is no bad shifting allowed. And uh, this is the WhatsApp channel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So please click on this one, uh, the WhatsApp group, and uh, join. Uh, so anything related to the course, um, like if a session is not there for the particular day, it will be communicated only through WhatsApp uh, group. Okay. And uh, so yeah, the recordings and notes will be sent out. Uh, uh, it will be uh, like uploaded in Graphy. That's our uh, LMS platform. Yeah. And uh, so these are all the social media links. So uh, yesterday we, I did share the YouTube uh, link. I hope it is uploaded. Just a second, let me check myself. Uh, yeah, so it was uploaded there yesterday after the sessions. So uh, yeah, you're using the yesterday's batch. Um, the recording and even today's one will be uploaded. Okay, so you may not mind doing that. Okay, and um, yeah, so today we'll be seeing the booting procedure and um, why it is needed or what is the uh, actual purpose. Because you won't uh, like obviously it is uh, a very old interview question and uh, many might have already. Uh, if you have already attended the interview for Linux or if uh, if not also. You might have heard this booting procedure. If not, uh, first thing, uh, any OS actually has almost the same booting procedure. A few steps, it will be different. Let's say your Mac OS or uh, your uh, Windows also, almost same. Few process will be a bit more in that compared to this one. Okay, so this is like a very easy and straightforward one. So, but uh, before knowing all this, you need to first thing, understand the actual process why we need to know this in the first place right so why in the sense let's say if something went wrong in and it is stuck in this grub screen right so this is a good screen actually so if it is stuck there um, you need to be in a position to understand okay uh, it is stuck in this stage only and it, it won't be like only stuck it will again try to boot and it will reach to this stage and again it will again be like uh, it will be a boot, right? So you should be uh, you should know okay why it stuck there or what went wrong. So for that at least the booting process is very very important. And uh, so the first thing the obvious one is well once you click on the power button. So the first thing what happens is let me show you this one. Um, yeah. So basically, let me give a, a rundown of your motherboard. So what actually happens is your uh, uh, like you will correct the power supply, right? So this uh, like a, a basic version of this one only will be in your laptops. Okay, so this is a, a PC uh, motherboard, uh, ATX uh, size. Is, okay. So actually, what happens is the there will be a small ampere of current will be sent throughout this whole motherboard. And why? Because we just switch, verify uh, if there is any hardware failure. Okay, so let's say your uh, this is where your memory slots will be, right? So uh, let's say one of your RAM is not uh, fully plugged in. Okay, so or uh, let's say you connected, obviously you won't do that. Let's say you uh, placed a uh, incompatible or uh, it's not compatible for this particular motherboard, that CPU who you connected. So it won't work, right? So like that, the list goes on, okay? So uh, it will check all the hardware components and it will show you this uh, kind of LED actually. So if this uh, LED is passed, 
like the uh, first thing your CPU, DRAM, and uh, VGA for your GPU and boot. Okay, so if all the three are done, the last three will uh, stay in the boot, and then only you can see the screen. Why I'm showing the MSI uh, unit resizes? Uh, that's what this motherboard itself is. The one I am using is a MSI motherboard. Okay, so that's the reason I'm showing it. So this is how, in my case, it will be. So a uh, modern motherboard or uh, a bit latest one, it will have its own number code like this. Yeah, it's already here. Okay, so like this, uh, the edge of code it will be showing here. So why this is important is if it is a hardware issue, here itself you need to uh, fix it or diagnose it. Okay, and uh, so that's what. So the small ampere of current it is sending, right? So that's called as post. So which means power common self test. So basically, it is testing itself uh, by sending a small amount of current throughout the, all the hardware. Okay. So that's the first thing. So once that is done and everything is good to go, the very first thing is your obviously your BIOS. So what is a BIOS basically? Basic input, output, input. So this is where the same concept only hardware level, but it is much more than that. Like you will have the information related to that as well. Like uh, first thing, any hardware uh, related to your performance, like your CPU and memory, right? So those two are the important one. And you have the hard disk as well, but hard disk, uh, anyhow, while buying itself, you will buy with the spe specific, uh, requirement right so mostly uh, let's say if it is a hard disk or an ssd uh, you will have uh, the speed of it right so that's what you measure it uh, how much speed is required for it so for an, a hard disk or an uh, like this one uh, the disk speed which is like 7200 rpm or 5400 so these two are market standard and uh, for the data centers, it will be a bit more than that, okay? So like 9,000 is also there, but uh, yeah. So these are all the hard disk speed we will look for. And how about the CPU and memory? You will see this uh, gigahertz and megahertz, uh, what is that? So basically these two are the frequencies of the uh, CPU and memory. So basically you are going to measure this, how CPU is going to perform in the frequency way. Okay, so again, uh, you need to give a specific voltage to it. And uh, again, you need not do yourself. Everything will be already configured. You need to select few profiles. So let's say you are having a gaming profile. So that's what you see here. So game used or uh, some XMP profiles are there. Uh, you can change it on the fly. It will be automatically or preset it is. Okay, so it will work like that. And the same thing goes for your memory. Okay, so while buying a memory stick, you might see the speed of it. So it will be calculated in uh, this kind of megahertz. And uh, so it's like a 3200 or like this. So in my task manager, if I show you. For CPU, you see, base speed is 3 gigahertz. And uh, my memory speed is 2667 megahertz. Like that, you, even in your machine, you just check the task manager. You might see that. So I'm just giving a very uh, layman overview about this one. So if I take a session on only CPU and memory itself, we can go throughout the session. That much content is there, but uh, we won't. Okay, so we are uh, already running out of time for uh, each topic. But yeah, so if you guys really need it, we can speak about the overclocking and those things. But that's all not needed for the session session. Uh, so, yeah. And you can see even the fan speed, everything is real time, especially in your BIOS and your systems information. So uh, your CPU temperature, motherboard temperature, all these are real time. And uh, here also you can see if you have any fan failures or anything. Okay? And uh, so the next one is, so this is your BIOS screen and this is a BIOS for from MSI. Okay, so the vendor of the motherboard chooses their own layout. So in your case, if it is a ASUS motherboard or some some other, even ASR or uh, 
what is like so many companies are there, right? So they have their own proprietary UI to it. And this is what I personally use. So that's the reason I'm showing you this. And the important or the USP of your uh, BIOS is your priority or the priority order for your uh, devices. So you have hard disk, CD, or your renewable disks, right? And even the network. So all these are decided. So basically what you're telling is, so you powered on your machine. So which one to be booted first? So that's what you are mentioning in the BIOS. So let's say you are having an SSD. So SSD full form, few people might not know. So HDD means hard disk. Okay. And the SSD, these two are actually the storage devices. So SSD is solid state. So basically hard disk, there will be a moving part, which is called as disks. Okay, so inside that there will be display. Actually, a physical display will be there. Uh, so that will be moving based on this speed. Whereas SSD, as the name suggests, it is a solid state, just like your pen drive, but with the huge uh, inside it will be. So there is no moving parts, and it is way faster compared to your hard disk. And the latest one is the type of interface it is using, which is uh, SSD, N, V, N, V. Uh, NVMe, PCIe, oh, so this is the latest one, so which will be working in, uh, so actually I'm not sure the exact speed currently it is, but uh, I've seen around 7 to 10 gigs per second it can transfer, okay, so this much uh, size, so this is like a professional period, and it is way too costly actually. So yeah, but uh, this is what the, you will never achieve this much speed, especially in your hard disks. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's the one. And uh, the next one is, so basically you're going to decide uh, in your BIOS, which one to be booted first. So let's say as a screen, uh, it's CD you had, and the next one is your CD or TV file. Again, you may ask, okay, we don't have CD or DVD. Anyhow, it is a virtual environment, right? So you can plug in as many CD drive or DVD. Uh, it is virtual. Okay? So you need not have in physical. Still, it works like a uh, actual, if you plug in a CD drive, how it works. Like okay, so let's say you selected uh, the SSD as your primary, or uh, let's say you selected hard disk because uh, it is easy for me to explain how hard disk uh, SSD works. So in this case, you select the first one, and uh, the next one would be your MBR, okay, or your partition style. Okay, so on. Let me show you the disk management. This is called as MBR. So basically, once you power on, you select which one to be booted first and which sector it should look for or uh, inside that hard disk uh, so the disk will be spinning right so which one to be choose choose first because all the data will be there let's say you are having movies series or some uh, documents or some something right so which one to be preferred first so that's what called as a boot disk and uh, that specific sector it should be there so that's where this MPR comes in and we will give it. So which sector to be booted first? And this is this is a type of partition. Okay, so you might never, as an end user, you will never consider this one because this is like a the last thought about it because uh, mostly we will never know which which is the booting style, other partition style it is. So. In your windows, you have GP. Okay, so there are two types. Just go to so basically how I went here is just right click your Windows key, disk management, and you will see this page. Right click one of the disks if you have many, and uh, go to properties, go to volumes. Here you see the partition style. So here it is GY partition table. So that's one of the partition style. Partition style. 
this and we are going to so MBA performance must introduce so what is the difference? So basically, MBR we can use only four primary partitions. So I will explain what is primary partitions in later sessions. Like that. once we see the risk management, it will be easy for you to understand it. So yeah, we will see that clearly. But the basic difference is in your GPT uh, partition style, you can treat 128 primary partitions. Okay, so now you see the difference. And uh, the main thing is a Windows is pushing the GPT means uh, almost everyone, even now, if you check in your machine also, it will be GPT. So without our concern, uh, Windows is using GPT, which is good. But MDR is a legacy support, means uh, uh, so machines which are like uh, older than 2000 uh, or the 1990s, like that. So those kind of machines support only MDR, not GPT. Okay? So even if you try to do that, it might throw some encoding error or something. Okay, so that's the difference. And uh, so why this partition style is important is, so basically that, uh, not only this primary partition is the difference, so your sector size and uh, sector size, your block size. So these are all is defined. So these are all called as metadata. Now we might ask, okay, what is metadata? So uh, these are all a metadata for a particular disk Right, so uh, basically, a uh, metadata is like a. Uh, let me show. You. Let me give a very basic example. So, you have employee data in your any company. You have an employee data, right? So, So, uh, let's say you don't have this first uh, first row, right? So, each column doesn't make sense, right? So, if you don't know what is happening here, so let's say you don't see this one. This first row is uh, not there, let's say, right? So, you will don't have an idea about, okay, you might somehow figure out the names, but the serial number, that is all fine. So this will be the experience or what it is, right? So we will, we won't have an idea of it. So that's what a metadata is. So this first row will become the metadata. So of this particular spreadsheet, right? So uh, with this first row defined, now you can easily understand that, okay, uh, it, it is, this is a salary and this is a joining date and this is an experience or something like that. And so like that's what called as metadata and each disk or a partition needs that metadata. Then only it can understand, okay, these many sectors forms this uh, size and um, this sector is a bit uh, important one or this is a boot sector. Like that, you need to define it. Well, we don't do ourselves, so the partition style, it will automatically do that. So that's what is defined by MBR and GPT. So both work in a different way, actually. So GPT is kind of optimal one, and that's the latest one as well. As well. So yeah, that's the metadata. So once you figure out that, the what it will be good in, right? So let's say you selected the uh, boot sector. So actually, it will try to boot the grub. So what is grub? Right. So, and you will see the grub screen even in your Windows. You will have, but you might have never seen that, or uh, you might. Okay. So basically, a grub screen. Grub screen in Windows. So you search for, and uh, you might have seen this kind of screen, right? So like if you have. Windows as well as Ubuntu in your same machine, or uh, if you have a same Windows 10 or 11 in the same disk, you might see this screen. So this is nothing but a uh, grub screen. So basically, a grub screen is nothing but um, you want to choose which one to be proceeded further. Obviously, you can't do two operating system at the same time. 
right? So that's the reason you need to choose uh, uh, prior to booting that, okay, uh, let's say for the time being, you boot to Ubuntu. So here you selected that. So all the drivers or the kernels, everything will be, uh, like your CPU will work towards those, right? So, uh, or allocate towards those and uh, it will be working. But if the windows will be, it's not that it will be erased or something, it will be in fault, right? So nothing will be uh, booting or uh, allocated for that. So let's say for, uh, you you shut it down and the next time you booting, you are clicking the windows thing, right? So it will prioritize that or all the hardware will be allocated for that. So like that, not simultaneously you can't uh, boot. Uh, so that's the reason we are using virtualization. Okay? So that's also a USB for virtualization that uh, this you can do, dual boot or even any, um, like if you have much more uh, capacity, like the CPU memory and hard disk, you can even do to so many machines at the same time. Right? So, yeah. So as of now, let me just give, uh, give uh, Windows and Linux. And in Linux, let me show you an example of the group screen. So like this, you might have seen Windows Boot Manager and uh, here it is for us. Easily you can understand. Yeah, you might have seen like this. Ubuntu, the same thing in uh, GNU grub screen. So each vendor has their own grub screens. So this is the GNU version of uh, grub screen. And that is a Windows one. So this is a Windows and this is GNU. And uh, yeah, like this, it will be. Okay. So let's say you selected Linux, obviously, for now. So you selected that. We have Windows 7. Red. Okay. So then 8, let's say. So you selected this one. So what it will be the next one? Obviously, your kernel. And uh, yesterday we, we discussed that kernel is a part of our, your mission or your basic, basically your OS. Why it's like that or why it is that important especially. So your OS, the first thing it depends on your disk manager or your device manager. And those things also rely on something, right? So that something is called as your kernel. So it's like a um, kind of, uh, uh, how to say, like matching all the dots. Okay, so that center piece of it is your kernel. Okay, so let's say you have these many drivers. I'm just giving a Windows example so that visually you can see it, but this is how in your Linux also would be. So let's say you are having these many hardware. So in my case, I have a, a, a camera and my Bluetooth drivers are there and my display driver somewhere. So all these are different hardwares and uh, my, it need to connect to a software, right? So um, like that's what your uh, drivers does. And in order to push the drivers or in order to serve the drivers, you need to have a kernel. So kernel will have a, a specific libraries for the drivers. So, and uh, you have a disk management that info also you be there and uh, your uh, physical equipments like uh, even any any hardware hardware info it also will be populated from kernel only like that it has many purposes okay so basically your kernel does a lot of jobs and if something went wrong it will be called as kernel panic why? Because your kernel is working, but it is uh, it is not working at the same time. Like uh, it's like how to say it's serving the purpose or it's consuming a lot of CPU and memory. For us, it it uh, it looks like it's doing the purpose, but it's not. Okay, so it will be doing some uh, there is some error in it, or while updating or some the kernel it went wrong, or if it is not compatible. 
like that so many issues it might occur if you are trying to do, modify the kernel but uh, if you are keeping it the same there will be like 99 percent there won't be any issues uh, especially you will face with the kernel okay and um, so that's what the kernel is uh, so over the course we will see what is the what and all you can do with the kernel okay so the next one it will be Grub. So the full form of grub is grand unified bootloader. And this bootloader term, you, if you are an Android enthusiast, uh, you might have heard uh, the boot image and bootloader. So that's what it is. So basically, it's like a boot instructions. Okay, this and all should be booted. So that's what it will be carried forward from the grub to kernel. So the next one will be your init. And it's called as init. And the next one is both are actually related. Both does the same purpose. Both uh, does serves the same purpose, which is like uh, init does initialize what need to be performed next. So let's say your kernel is also working fine. So in it, in the sense, like in which defined methods it will be there. So from in it uh, zero to in it six, it will be there. So in it uh, one, in it three, uh, four. It is not there. I'm not sure why they avoided four. So five and six. Okay. So what is the purpose of this? So let's say if I initiated init zero, if I just type init zero in my machine, it will initiate the shutdown service or uh, it will initiate that steps. So it will right away go ahead and shut down the whole machine itself. And init one is like a single user mode. or it's nothing but an emergency mode. So we will go to this mode for sure in the upcoming like um, tomorrow if possible or in the next uh, coming session so it's do that okay and uh, in two is like a um, so the same multi-user mode without net so your network drive won't be booted okay so the in three is the same thing just fit me And here init file is nothing but your GUI or it's called as X11. Basically, you are uh, any GUI uh, we use like Windows uh, currently we are using, right? So similarly, a GUI is there for almost every Linux distros as their own GUI. And uh, distros, what is what is the meaning for that? Yesterday session we did saw right. Uh, it's nothing but uh, different versions of Linux. Since it is open source, anyone can create their own. And there is a lot actually. So yeah. And um, a reboot. So init six is called as a reboot. So if you just type init six in your shell, it will be initiating the reboot. So what is shell and those things? We will see in tomorrow's session. Okay. So not today. It is it will be taking some time. So yeah. And uh, so how about the run level? So run level is basically, and this init process also, I do have an example for you. So you might have faced this advanced boot option. So let's say you uh, somehow, you don't, uh, the, the Windows machine is not booted correctly. So let's say you have tried three to four times if you, yeah, like this, repair your computer like this, you might have seen. If you click enter, you might have in uh, you might see this advanced options or, or advanced boot options, and in that you have the startup settings. Here you see enable safe mode. So that's basically your single user mode. Enable safe mode with network. That's your uh, init three. Okay, and uh, enable safe mode with command prompt. Only command prompt will be there, and um, 
Yeah, like that. So if you select four, enable set mode, there won't be even network. Okay, so it's like an init two. Okay, so it's like a both init one or two. So you won't even connect to the internet. Only you will be using the machine as well as there won't be any network also. So that's what uh, the startup settings in your windows or if you go to start and type system config, you might have seen this screen. So in your Windows 10 also, these options are there. So here you just go to boot and the same options will be there, safe mode. If I just click on safe mode and uh, if I don't select this network and this is a separate option only. So if I select minimal, there won't be a network, it won't boot like this, okay? So if I select this and apply and click okay and reboot my machine, it won't even show me the GUI. So if I uh, select this checkbox, it won't show the GUI, only uh, MS DOS, which will be showing, or the command prompt. Okay, so like that. So yeah, so basically you are kind of uh, same, right? So this init process is like a, uh, this has been followed for many, uh, like many versions of your Linux, but here, these options are there from the Windows 7. Okay. So save build and then no GUI build on those things. Okay, so it's kind of similar. So what in all you're going to do after your kernel is passed, how you're going to boot your machine like that. Okay, so either you want the network to be there or you want it to be only a single user, only you need to use it. Uh, or it is uh, like uh, GUI you are needed or not like that. And the famous or the most uh, standard one is your uh, init three and this one and init five. So either of those which will be used. And uh, coming back to the run level. So run level is basically you are, you just go to the task manager and go to startup apps. So this startup apps, what is the purpose of this? So it will be booting along with my machine, right? So similarly, you are having startup applications or programs in your lives, right? So those also should be booted, but during which time it need to be. So that's what you're going to define here. So you will have a path. So now, uh, okay, now you might ask, okay, what is this ETC, RC or something? So this ETC is the file system uh, a path. Okay, so we will see an extensive session on that in, uh, in uh, again, like uh, the next sessions, we will see that slash or ETC. So these are all called as different path. Okay, so yeah, rc.d and uh, rc3.d or something. So basically, if you are in this run level, you can boot uh, to, for the timing, let me just give you an easy example, like Chrome.exe. So if I, if this is a legit executable file, uh, once my machine is booted, right away to launch the Google Chrome uh, browser, like that. Or you can even define to one more important part, which is edc init.b. Okay, so you have these two parts and uh, your system will look for these two. Okay, so if so, nothing is uh, there, obviously some system process will be there in etc unit dot b. But uh, if you want to define most, uh, the preferred one is etc unit dot b. Okay, so yeah. Okay, and after this run level, finally your system is booted. Okay, so. Before booting, these many things it will go through. Again, I'm giving a very, very basic idea. It's like a very huge process, but um, once again, like it, a lot of elements will might fail here. So mostly it will fail, especially in this uh, kernel. Okay, so then, yeah. So this is what you are lost or you are boots and anything you can call it. With, uh, before seeing that, this means things Okay, so I need doubts in here.
on the weekend batch, I used to give a two hour session of the same. But here I've given a very basic idea about what the knowledge is happening. So yeah. And you need not worry too much about your bios and those things, okay? So, so it's like an advanced, if you are interested, uh, you just, uh, you can search for how to overclock your CPU and memory. So that's what your potential of your, you will actually unlock your uh, CPU and memory's potential. If your motherboard supports, okay, so if it doesn't, obviously there is no purpose in it. But most of the motherboards nowadays in even laptops supports the overclocking. And uh, yeah, so you can do that all those in your BIOS. Okay. okay, so so can someone mention in the chat like if uh, you downloaded successfully the ISO file? Uh, Stream you asked that way or anyone. You can mention in the chat like did someone downloaded the ISO and the executable. Actually, I didn't told you to download this one yesterday. So these two are the files which we needed for the local installation, which means you are basically your uh, mission. Okay. And uh, now quickly while we are here, so we will see how, what is the actual difference between your um, VMware or, sorry, not VMware, your virtualization and your containerization. Okay, so we need to understand the difference and then only you can proceed further. Because both containers we will see and virtualization we must see, no other choice. And yeah. Virtualization. So what is the difference? So basically, your virtualization, there is a, it both does the same job to make the system work for your uh, required uh, uh, application. Or let's say an application requires to be running only in a specific uh, operating system. Or in that operating system only, it is working effectively. Uh, so, what would be your required requirement? So, let me just give an idea. So, first thing you'll see the virtualization. So, this is my base machine, which is Windows 11. And uh, okay, so I already went through this slide side. So, this slides you just, uh, I guess it will be uploaded to the portal. Okay, so this slides uh, explains the same thing. Okay, so your BIOS will execute and well, NBR bootloader. So once MDR is um, loaded, uh, it will be going to the next phase, which is your grub. Okay, and your MDR is what uh, it will be storing the first sector. Okay, and you see, yeah, it's located in the first sector of the bootable disk. And you might see this error like uh, boot device not found like this. So why you are seeing that error? Right, so most, yeah, most probably you might have seen at least once this error, right? So why we are seeing that? Basically, your device, uh, your uh, um, BIOS, right? So your BIOS is modified somehow and a boot disk is not recognized or that the disk itself might be corrupted or not connected correctly. Some Something happened in the hardware level which is forcing the system to not go to them, right? So basically it will go through that. Uh, physically, there might be some, um, like, uh, like it is not connected fully or any issue, it might be triggered. Or even the boot order, sometimes automatically it might change. Okay, so even that might cause the issue. So like that, uh, like this is kind of one of an example, right? So. If this, uh, you need to, you are the ones who need to diagnose these kind of issues. So for that, you should understand this uh, whole process. Okay. 
and uh, so that's what it you know kernel image and download so yeah that's the image process yeah either three or five in it and the run level so this is all the class this okay so rc dot d slash rc2 dot so yeah So now, uh, let me show you the installation files. So once again, for the people who joined only today, so you just uh, go to bit.ly slash Linux LN1. Okay, so you just give the same link in the chat. You just click that link and bookmark it. So if you just press enter, you will see this uh, resource you can bookmark and this will be available even after you have to know or something right so this is a public link and most probably i won't know i change this then okay so you can just click on this bookmark section and uh, you can bookmark it so anything related to our course or anything in the it will be posted here okay uh, the installation files you just go to that and download this iso and vm so both uh, cumulatively, it will be around uh, almost 10 point, uh, almost 11 gigs, you can call it, okay? So, it's a huge in size, but it includes the packages, okay? So, around 7,000 packages will be there in the same IOS. That's the reason it is around 9.43 gigs. And uh, again, you might ask, okay, which uh, you can also choose your own ISO. I'm not uh, forcing you. So please do, uh, act, like, please do use a uh, nine or above eight, which is much appreciated because real seven is fine still, but in your exams, you can't appear to the, uh, like appear with real seven knowledge. So real eight, few are changed. So what are all those few features? We will look into it, but as of now, please do install. Uh, or if, if you install the same ISO, that's fine. Okay, so don't mind. Or if you want to the latest one, uh, you can use that. But at least eight. Okay, okay. so and uh, if you are having hard time install uh, downloading this, because this is a whole a single file. Uh, so, so, yeah, downloading. So if I start download, in my case, pause it. So yeah, uh, if you have any download manager like I do, you can download it without any issue. But if you are facing uh, the download issue or something, you can use the torrent. Okay, so torrent also is available here. And please do let me know if you are having issue downloading. Um, you just drop an email to the support uh, at the rate logic labs. So it will be addressed, okay? But we should have a working environment. And if you are a person who can't even install, we will see how to install in GCP as well as AWS. Not today because it's already time. So tomorrow we'll see. For the time being, I'll show you how to install in the, uh, your local machine, okay? Uh, but uh, we are seeing virtualization and containers, right? Um, better we will see these two tomorrow. Okay, so I'll just show you how to install it because, yeah. So let's say you've downloaded this ISO and uh, so the installation instructions is already here for the VMware workstation. And uh, this is only for the Windows uh, one. Okay, so workstation is for Windows and you have uh, VMware Fusion. So that is for your Mac, okay, so Mac OS must use that, but uh, I don't have a paid version for this one, okay, so it's a it's a paid one, like 60 days evaluation key will be sent to you, but this is a lifetime access with this key, if you use, uh, it is a lifetime one, okay, so I don't have a key for this one, unfortunately, so if you are a Mac user, uh, try to install it, that's fine. So 60 days is enough for our sessions. But after that, uh, you need to pay for it. Or you can install uh, through uh, GCP or AWS so, so that you can practice much more than 60 days. Okay. So, 
Yeah. And you should not pay for a lab. Okay, so that's the first rule I initially inform my students. Okay, so yeah. And this VMware workstation installation is like any other uh, Windows software installation. So just double click it. And uh, so once you are in this page, uh, Yeah, so once you are in this page, um, so you just double click it and next, it will start installing uh, the package, right? So once installed, it will ask you for the license key and everyone can use the same key, okay? So it's a universal key and this version, if you're using this particular version, this key works. And uh, if you are trying to install a new version, which is there, which is like workstation 17.5, Obviously, you can use that, but the point is, if you are trying to use that one, uh, like this key doesn't work. Okay, so you just let me know if you are if you really want the latest one. The options doesn't change, guys. Okay, so there is not much uh, bug also in this version. So you can use this one, but if you really want workstation seventeen um, pro, you just let me know. I will provide you the key. Okay, so because. This is a stable one I personally use for quite a long time. So, yeah. You just download this package. So, this is the way your workstation pro and try to install it. But you need to do one more thing, which uh, I need to mention, which is just go to your performance, go to CPU, and check for virtualization. So, this is your task manager, by the way. Go to performance, CPU, and virtualization should be enabled. Okay, so if it is mentioned as disabled, and most probably it will be disabled if you are a first time user. Why? Because your vendor, which is like your MSI or your HP, Dell, any laptop you are using, right? So they personally um, doesn't like you to use the virtualization, right? So by default, it will be disabled. So how to enable this? So you just search with the vendor, so HP, um, virtualization enable with the BIOS. So how to enable? So why I'm asking you to search in the Google, right? So if the instructions is the same, you need to change via your personal com laptop or your computer's BIOS. Okay, so that's fine. But the issue is BIOS booting key, right? So this key, if I, let's say you give F10, in my personal mission, uh, uh, my PC, here it is Dell or Dell key. And uh, in a Lenovo mission, it is a F1. So the key changes. So for sure, you will be confused which one to be, uh, which is the correct key to boot. So better to check with the, your vendor itself. So just search with Lenovo, Dell. Every vendor has their own link. First link will be their official one. So just go to that. And you see here it is F2. And Lenovo it is uh, F1, you see. So each and every vendor has their own. And if you want it to be bit specific, you can even mention as uh, then uh, like the specific version also you can mention. So let's do something to one. I'm not sure about the version. So Dell was for uh, like specific variant if you want. You can mention your laptop's variant and you can get it. Okay, so like this, uh, HP with this. Okay. So how to boot, but obviously the first link will be the same. Or the this key will be the same for the uh, your vendor, which, which means like HP will be F10, mostly. Right, so yeah. So please do enable the virtual emission. Then only you can actually use your uh, VMware. Why? Because it need to be virtually used, right? So your CPU, memory, hard disk, everything should be virtually used. The hard disk control is just fine. Okay, so anyhow, VMware can virtualize it, but your CPU and memory is a hardware, right? So basically it need to, or your machine need to tune itself and understand, okay, you can allocate or you can do the resource sharing and using the 
any random application or sorry any random OS. So basically, we are installing a Red or a Red Hat OS, which is not at all related to Windows, right? So and we are going to allocate something to it. So that's the thing. Okay. So so once you installed. Uh, so why this virtualization is important, uh, we will see tomorrow. Okay, so yeah, it's already time. So better let's see tomorrow this uh, virtualization and containers difference. Okay, so that's a very important one. And uh, once your virtualization is enabled, please do uh, anyhow it will, it will be automatically rebooted after the BIOS change. And please come here and check it whether it is enabled. Then you can proceed with the installation. Okay. And uh, once your VMware workstation is installed, so just go to help and select the about. You see, status is licensed. Even I'm using the same thing. Okay. So it's, there is no expiration for that. And uh, this is your home dashboard. Okay, so just click, click on create a new virtual machine. And uh, so obviously select the custom. And this is the hardware compatibility. Okay, so Basically, you are going to select which hardware you are going to use. We are going to use the latest one, which is virtualization 16.4. And don't change this one. Let's say you're going to change this one. It is like a very old version. So like 2006 or seven, something like that. Um, this version is version 5. Okay, so you, you see the limitation now, it is 128 bits of memory. You can virtualize, especially in this uh, VMware workstation. This particular version, but you see during that time, only 3.5 weeks. So you see how long it's, how a long way it came, right? So that's how it is. And it's this is also not the latest one. So the latest one supports even much more than this one, especially as an end user or a commercial use. Cases. For your uh, enterprise or in your company, it will be much more than this. Okay, so just click next, and you need to locate your ISO, which is your nothing but your OS. Okay, so just click on browse, and you can locate it. So this is my ISO part, and the best thing about uh, this particular ISO or this official build one is, it is an easy install option is there. Okay, so what is the easy install? Uh, yeah, this is the Easy install uh, screen. So basically, if you give a name and um, the username as well, uh, so automatically it will set up the root at home as well as the few options. I will show you that few options it will set up. Okay. So let me set a password. So please do set a uh, simple password because this is a one time setup. Okay. So uh, anyhow, we will save this password in a session. So once we save, you will not need this actually. Uh, so I just give the password as one, two, three, three. Because anyhow, you are the one using the lab. So please keep it simple. And, uh, but few people might not. So you for those, anyhow, I will show you the root account password reset. Okay, so that's also part of the exam. So I, we will see that without logging in, how to reset the root password. Okay. And the next one is your machine's name. So let's say you are having more than one, uh, this one partitions. So if you have only C partition, then obviously there is no choice. You should install only in C. Or if you are having more than C partition like I do, I will usually install in other one. Why? Because C partition is mostly used only for your Windows. Okay, and um, the as uh, like uh, in the lab. Let's say I'm going to allocate 20 or you know, 50 gigs, we will allocate sometimes. So it will consume a lot of space in your C partition, which is anyhow a lab session, but still you won't delete the lab right away. Right? So that's the reason I would suggest you, if you're having much more partitions, please do install in the other one than your C. But if you have only one partition, uh, there is no choice. So you must choose only that. I will choose F and I will install. 
Yeah. So this is the important one, which is how many processor you're going to, or how many core you're going to allocate. So I have eight core. So I can allocate two, but one itself is more than enough. So I just give one. So how many uh, number of processors, like um, this is a multi-thread one, right? So how many you're going to say, so like logical processor, I have 16, but still one itself is more than enough. So just the next and uh, the memory. So by default, so since I have eight bits, it selected two, which is fine. I can even select one also. It's my, uh, it, that also does work. So at least 512 NB is needed, but uh, two bits is an optimal one. So you just go to next. And uh, so this is an important one, which is like you can either use use bits, uh, bridge network, or you can use NAT. It's a network address and the translation. So I personally suggest you to use NAT because sometimes this bridge network won't turn up or it might give some connection issue. So better use NAT and click on next. And please never select these two. So this two will not populate any IP to your machine. So select only either one of these two. First two options, click on next. And this uh, controller types, just go with the recommended one. So this is what I told, uh, we, uh, virtual disk types, uh, NVMe. Okay, so it's like non-volatile memory express and uh, SATA. Okay, so SATA is like, uh, you can either go with either one of those except IDE. So IDE is kind of depreciated there. So, okay, so now we'll use that. You can either use SCSI, SATA, NVMe, Anyhow, it is a virtual environment. So there is no issues with any one of those except IDE. But you can go with the recommended with which is NVMe. Next. Obviously, you are installing for the first time. So click on create a new one. Next. And the default size, which it is suggesting, is 20 gigs. That's fine. But you see an interesting option here, which is store virtual disk as a single file or as a multiple files. So what is that right so let me explain that so this is called as so if you're already worked in vmware you might have heard a term called as thin provisioning and thick provisioning thin provisioning basically it's a very easy understanding, which is like, uh, let's say, uh, the same 20 gigs. The whole 20 gigs will be right ever populated if you are using the thick provision, which is this one. Store virtual disk as a single file. So right away, if I click on next and create uh, the uh, OSS booter, it will create the whole chunk 20 gigs right away. And the next one, this one is, Gradually, it will increase based on my usage. So let's say I install and I use like uh, one gig only I use. Okay, so the remaining stays uh, open. Or oh, sorry, uh, only five gigs I'm using. The remaining fifteen gigs are there, which I can use for any anything. And let's say I'm using um, for another five more gigs later. So it, this will be increased. It's like contained. So this is, uh, this is how it will be. So that's called as store a split virtual disk into multiple files, and this is called as thin provision. Okay. So why this thin and thick is important is you will see this new same name in your VMware vSphere. Okay. So here it is mentioned as a uh, as an end user. This is easy for you to understand, right? So split virtual disk into multiple files as a single file. Same concept, but uh, yeah. So you can go with either one, but you can choose with this one because um, the right away we won't use the whole disk, right? So the whole 20 gigs won't be used. It will be few only to be used, okay? So you can select the next, uh, this one, uh, thin provisioning. Next, where you want to store the disk. I always suggest you to store the disk in the same directory, just create a new directory, disk, enter. You can give the name 
the easy name. So this is the first case, right? So one OS or something. This next, this is a summary from the wrong finish. So I will show you the screen where it is uh, doing the easy install. So this is the section where you will get an error if your virtualization is not selected. If your virtualization is disabled, now we might get a pop-up error that uh, VT hyphen X is disabled or something. Okay, so it can't locate that or some error it will throw. Basically, if you see that error, your virtualization is not enabled. And if you are uh, using an enterprise laptop, virtualization changing your BIOS and all is not enough. Okay, so for people like that, don't worry, you can use AWS, TCP, and Azure. Okay, so every company allows that at least, the CSP thing, different cloud service providers. So yeah, we will anyhow install that tomorrow session. So, yeah, you need not worry about downloading anything. Just you can boot up. Within 10 minutes, you can put up the, any one of the CSP. Okay. So, yeah. Again, this booting might take some time. So at least five to 10 minutes, you should wait. Depends on your hard disk or your SSD speed. Yeah. So this is the screen it will skip. So if uh, easy install is there. So now you see all are grayed out, but just wait for a few seconds. It will be automatically populated and gone to the next series. And uh, so this is how you click inside. So just click on inside this uh, screen. So this is basically your VM console, the whole box. So if you click anywhere inside, your mouse or your cursor will be, uh, mouse pointer will be used inside that VM and how to come back. Okay, so basically if you move your uh, cursor out of the screen, automatically, it is smart enough to detect it. In some laptops, it doesn't. Okay, so in that case, uh, you just press Control and Alt. So it's already there will be an instruction here. You see, to return your uh, return to your computer, press Control and Alt together. So yeah, so now your cursor is back to your base machine. And I guess it's already showing. So, Better. So if you don't see like this, always do reboot. Again, it will start from the first. Okay, so. And it's already time for the day. So any doubts still now? And uh, tomorrow's agenda would be to install in the cloud and you will see the difference and uh, we'll see what is uh, fire, like basic things like what is shell. Again, it is a theory part, but a needed one. So you can skip that one. Yeah, you see, automatically done and it will it will proceed further. Actually, we need to do it ourselves. So it automatically does on our behalf and it will start the installation. So this might take at least 10 to 15 minutes and we are already running out of time. So tomorrow's session, I will show you once it is installed, it will, it will just go to the log screen. Okay, so basically it will install around 1800 packages or something. So obviously it will take some time. So please do till this one for the people who are fine with installing in your VM uh, where. Okay, so yeah. And if you're having any hard time uh, installing, please drop and mail. We will okay. okay. So yeah, thanks for sticking this long. It's already time. Sorry for extending the session. So yeah. Um,
let's see in tomorrow session guys okay so yeah thanks all then have a great day